Hello, how's everybody? This is Dr. Fang Mei Road from Tiffin University. Welcome to the intro to a social psychology class. This class mainly is for a Tiffin University students. They are taking my class, Psy 250, Social Psychology. Okay, um, because right now it's coronavirus, so we are not able to do face-to-face -face, uh, lecture. That's why I'm making this video. But if you are not my student, I welcome you as well. Welcome to come to our social psychology world. Okay, actually a lot of my students uh, in the class, they say, well, social psychology should be for everybody, right? Because we all need to learn about uh, how people thinking, how do we change our attitude, you know, how do we behave the way we behave, right? So uh, hopefully you find this video is helpful. Now this is actually is a part five of my uh, lecture about attitude and attitude change. So this should be the last part of this topic, okay? Now, well, we need to talk about attitude and what is attitude anyway? Well, attitude actually is evaluation to things, to idea, to whatever you see the world, okay? We, will, we know we are not a neutral observer. When we see the things, we will give you evaluation and we will have some attitude about it, right? And also the attitude can be a factor determine who, what are you going to do for certain things, right? So in my last lecture, I talk about, um, for example, coronavirus, how do we prevent it, right? Now, I'm from Taiwan. So uh, in Taiwan, the president, the uh, administrator, they believe mask. Wear mask is one of the way. So the whole country, they ever, they, uh, emphasize wear a mask, okay? On another hand, uh, in this American and also your country, people still have a trouble to accept uh, wear a mask if you are not sick, right? Well, attitude is not no right or wrong, it's just people have different way of thinking, right? And so we say actually have a three part of your attitude. Your affective, uh, affectively, that's your mindset, your, your emotion part, your cognitive, that's your mindset, and then your behavior. Okay, so those three attitudes uh, that we have, we have that, right? And so actually when you want to change people's mind, you need to know like which part of attitude they come from. Right, so if you want people to, to fall in love with uh, uh, drinking Coca-Cola, right, then you may want to put a party as your advertising man, right? So people will go from, hey, yeah, if I party, let me drink, let me buy some Coke or same as pizza, right? But if you want to change people's mind about something about their thinking cognitively, then you may need to bring the speaker, give the speech, and change their thinking, right? So you need to know which part of attitude they are coming from. Then you will do the, the way that match with their attitude, the base of their attitude, so you maybe you can change their mind, right? Okay, we also talk about attitude can be you aware that or you don't aware that. If you aware that, that's called explicit attitude that means you consciously you know what happened right and but you also a part you don't really know you have an attitude and we call implicit attitude okay then we also mention about um when we uh, want to change people's attitude uh you may not want to give the severe punishment or reinforcement you may want to do the moderate because if you do moderate they won't able to find a good external justification. So they will have to find their internal justification and they will eventually change their mind. Okay, so that is something we cover from our previous lecture. Okay, if you are interested, 
<clears throat> and you don't have chance to watch that video yet, you will come to go back to that part. Okay, so now we are talking about the power adver advertising. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds look at this, this PowerPoint. Okay, so this PowerPoint actually is talk about the power of advertising. Okay, quite often when you are see the advertising, then you tell yourself, well, that's for people, for other people, not for me. And you also say, well, I won't get impact. They won't influence me. They all only influence other people. Well, surprisingly, surprisingly, here they say people get inference more they can think about, more than they are aware about it. Okay, so we have to be careful. Like here, say based on research, they are they are inference very strong. Sometimes when the product come out, the advertising come out, well, within the first six months, they will see, they will show, well, people start to to buy, right? So. <coughs> We were influenced by something even we don't think we do, right? Okay, now, sometimes when they do the advertising, they may have some background information, okay? They are not, you won't think that it influences you. Well, but they do. So this is called subliminal, subliminal message subliminal message that's words or pictures that are not consciously perceived but may nevertheless influence people's judgment attitude and behavior okay so let's see very very strong even they just put in the background they can influence you okay and even uh more so sometimes when we are looking for those advertisements, you will see um, the culture can be a part of the factors they decide how to do their advertisement, okay? Unfortunately, sometimes they can become stereotype, okay? So let's, let's look at here what they say. A lot of time that culture advertising uh, stereotype is target on gender target on gender right because uh they believe if they sell the uh kitchen stuff if they sell the about cooking right they believe if they bring the female as the character for their advertising uh people more like to, to watch and more like to be influenced because it looks like a lot of them associate female with kitchen, right? But if they want to do more like um, cognitive talking, right? They want to do more labor, right? Or build a house, all of those. They may emphasize more about, they may use more about male, right? And so um, it, it's kind of okay, but then if they become stereotype, then they can become a problem. Right? Don't you think so? Okay, so we say stereotype threat. Stereotype threat. So that is say the apprehension experienced by member of a group that their behavior might confirm a cultural stereotype. Right? And we say stereotype not always negative. It's good for beginning. Okay, so for example, if you want to go to Taiwan, go to my country, and then you do the, you know, do some um, research, okay? And you say, oh, people in Taiwan, they use chopstick to eat, right? And that's that's good stereotype. So then you may want to practice how to use chopstick. So when you go there, you, you have no trouble for eating food, right? So it's good for beginning, but then, you know what? People sometimes more similar than difference. So you can use stereotype as a beginning, but then, you know, it's good to know the real picture and the good sto real good story. Okay, so 
according to the research here show how gender especially the female stereotype have been put into the place in different countries advertising okay so if you see the orange orange that is female woman if you see the red that's men okay and you can see there are so many countries here australia hong kong france italian mexico and the united states in different um different 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 year in portugal right and you can see with all this research they show more female stereotyping has been put in the place than male stereotyping people give male more flexibility for their role right than female right okay another thing so then here talk about when we talk about culture right and we we tend to believe right in the western culture uh we people emphasize more like individuality right emphasize self-improvement right and then for asian culture it's more like uh emphasize the collective right so then when they do the advertising here when they do the western culture they will emphasize more like you know how to pull, improve yourself how do you feel good about yourself if you use this product that make you feel good right and then if you're doing the asian culture they may say well if you use this they make your family make you uh, more accepted by the, the society right so that is um something i believe when they then advertising maybe they they learn this but well we say a little bit stereotype maybe good beginning but don't get caught of that especially right now it's a global village you know people communicate with each other especially now internet people learn from each other and we have to be very careful about stereotype okay okay now when we when we um uh, don't want people change their mind okay then they say something you can do is to instead try to prevent yourself or your people your family or your kids to uh, be influenced you may give them a small dose of ex exposure before they really get to that, that part of the world like for example your kids say ma i'm going to go to the party instead of say no you will say well if you want to go to party let me give you some idea about what people do in the party okay and then give them some idea if they give it a drink then i heard people say be be very careful because they may put something inside the drink they're not good for your your body or they may put drug there so give them some idea and this is called attitude inoculation okay inoculation that like you given a little bit like you know the, the the high technology for medical field now we get a lot of immunization so we don't get sick for certain disease they had before so actually our hope right to have a immunization for coronavirus come out soon so then hopefully we don't have high in the house right okay so this is called editing in, in inoculation okay this is also something we have to be careful or be aware about product placement product placement what's product placement you know when you are watching tv right when you are watching show right sometimes you'll see people drink coffee and the cup say starbucks right or you may see um they have uh, some furniture or something and they have uh, some name about certain company right well that's called product re, re, product placement so then that's why a lot of company they they want to offer the the movie uh star you know to wear something designed by their company they want they wear their shoes or they want wear their necklace or whatever or they give them the free food right so they can put in the in on the show well it's good for them but then their reason is they want to make 
the audience see the product. So then even they don't tell you, hey, come to buy this. When you watch that show, you may say, oh, the way he or she drink the coffee sounds very good. Ah, oh, maybe I should go and get one, right? Or oh, wow, that dress so pretty, maybe I should buy one, right? Or oh, the furniture looks so good, let me see, I should buy the piece, right? So um, this is, uh, we have to be careful because they can influence us, okay? They can influence us, okay? And actually they, they say, you know, it's, it's very strong influence as well. Okay, so how do we resist that? Okay, resist the uh, persuasive message. Well, here say, you just need to be aware that. You just need to be aware that. Okay, you be aware that, so then you be careful. For example, when I went to buy the car, you know, usually you, you get the deal with, with salesmen, and then the next day you had to go in to talk to the uh, people sit inside the office, and they will start to tell you, you know, you should buy this warranty, buy this warranty, and this buy warranty, and this. And then together, wow, when you come out, you find that your price is much higher than before you walk it, right? And it's very interesting, one time I went to buy the car and I told the salesman, say, I don't want to go in. If I go in, I think they will start to sell me a lot of stuff. And my salesman said, well, just say no for everything, right? And he's right. Actually, with his warning, I'm kind of careful, but I still buy, I still get persuaded for some. But at least I, I get idea and then I be more careful when I say yes for something, right? So that is a, uh, the idea here, say, a lot of time we have, we pay little attention, okay, for the message, actually try to change our mind. So if you be very careful, then hopefully the result is better, right? Okay, now, something worry a lot of parents, especially they have a teenager kids, it's about peer pressure peer pressure, right? They are even more so for the adolescents, right? And actually they say, the reason adolescents, they are very more vulnerable for peer pressure because that is important source of social approval, okay? So for example, they want, they say, hey, you should get this drink. If they so they don't drink this, well, you are chicken, you are chicken, you are chicken, right? So if you are the, um, it, so it's important for as a parent, if you're a teenager kids, to know why they get that way, right? So you maybe want to just be their friend. Be a, don't just be their parents all the time. Sometimes you can be their friend, maybe they more likely learn or hear what you try to say, right? But that is it's very uh, important stage for that for that people in that they want to get approval okay they want to get approval that's why they do this right so it's important at home you get them enough uh, identify them and recognize their effort so they feel that they have been recognized from home they don't have to go always go out to get approval from other people that's just my two cents hopefully it's helpful okay but anyway here say how do we help them to resist peer pressure Okay, so they, they have many programs they try very hard to help teenagers um, to, to, to able to stay uh, in their good mind rather than influenced by their peers. Okay, they say maybe we can help them to able to do some logical thinking, right? Um, no, they say to extend the logical attitude approach to more effectively best okay persuasion technique so rather than just tell them don't do this don't do this because that you also want to tell them i do this because i care about you because i care about you so if they they are able to know your heart then hopefully they do something not because you told me because you care about me so i also care about you so i think that is the, the point here okay and of course, maybe a little bit small dosage of something reasonable or in the safe 
long okay if you think a little bit they won't affect your body or something uh, like uh, taste a little bit of wine a little bit you know then um, they were less, less, less likely to be curious about what's going on and they want to try it right okay so here they they show some evidence you know say they say so program they they try to prevent uh, the the ever since their smoking issue so actually they they have them do role play give them maybe uh for people really want to try you know have them do the role play so they can talk about it so actually maybe um uh, because i i'm i mean my my fear is counseling so quite often we do role play and maybe you can have a, a one one kid play as a cigarette another kid play as themselves and they have a cigarette talk to the, the teenager about how can be the trouble if you smoke me right and then switch the role so by doing that if they can hear what smoke what cigarette talk and actually the cigarette also play by themselves right so if they play as a cigarette they were able to think about what is wrong with cigarette right and then they tell when they are do the role play they talk to their peer same time they are talking to themselves and then you have them switch role then they say actually when when they do that actually they find actually it's quite um successful okay so maybe there's something you can try if you are in the field for this okay and this is our last slide okay so here also says sometimes if you you that people feel their freedom to perform something have been prohibited they more likely do it they more likely do it okay and the, the name called reactance theory reactance theory you know so if you are play the reverse psychology then you may you don't want them to feel the reason you that you don't want them to because you because because this is not good and then their freedom has been taken away. You say you can do it, but just let you know when you do this, there can be trouble or reverse psychology. Say, well, just do it, just do it. They may tend to say, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so actually that's all I have about attitude change for the part five. And so um, now we have a five part uh, in this in this chapter and if you are my student make sure um, you go back to the Moodle make sure you do the quiz and then also I really like to hear your feedback so if you are uh, that's actually if my if you are my student actually that's your required and so don't think that is a um, how, the, the homework actually just think about that's how you talk to me okay because I have no way right now to talk to you to hear your voice that's why I enjoy so much to see to 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 read your feedback because then I can I can see how I lecture here get to your heart right and so hopefully this is helpful and if you really find this helpful actually you can subscribe you can push the bell and go subscribe the my channel so whenever I produce a video um, then you, 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 you already get notified before uh, I, I put in the Moodle. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm glad to have a chance to share with you about this topic. Hopefully you find helpful. So make sure at the end of the, this uh, lecture, I really want to wish you have uh, stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.